some of you might be aware. My arch nemesis, the Dark Lord Mercer, published a video on March 2nd, 2017 entitled Write One-Shot RPG Campaigns DM Tips with Matt Mercer. I'm a little frazzled. Because I know, and he knows, and he knows that I know, that he was calling me out. This was a challenge. He's been my arch nemesis for many centuries now. And he's saying here, check out these 11 tips. I bet you can't do better. Oh, 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 oh Max. All right, 11 tips, amateur hour. Boom. I quickly plagiarized his material and consolidated it down into five tips, plus two bonus tips. All right, and I'm gonna explain to you the Style Hook Climax Hands Loot Method for One Shot Campaign Generation. I'm gonna give you the two tips, Bat Plans and Stranger Danger. All right, and then I'm gonna t show, share with you a campaign that I made, a little one shot I made using these tips. All right? All right, let's do this. So the first thing is style. All right, Matt talks about, you gotta figure out, is it a noir campaign? Is it a, um, is it a, you know, whatever campaign? I chose sword and sorcery, all right? But let's go through the whole method and then I'll come back to my campaign. So decide what style you wanna play in and um, next you gotta figure out the hook. And it's gotta be clear and like palpable, I feel like. Like you, something you can do, something you can finish. Not like a vague idea of like something that needs to be accomplished, all right? So, um, next thing after that, you have the climax. Figure out the climax. So figure out the beginning, what's gonna get them hooked. Figure out the ending, what's going to be the final battle. And then you can figure out how much time you have in between. And that's when you fit in the hands. And because Matt, uh, the Dark Lord Mercer, excuse me, said to, uh, to you to have a handful of NPCs, all right? And then in, in, uh, have social encounters ready with each of them. And even, you can have them in different places, but you could move them as you need, as you see fit. If your players don't go where you expect, just move the NPC, they'll never be the wiser. And um, so for the hands method, you, uh, that's why I called it hand. So you got a handful of NPC, and also, how can they lend you a hand? How are they gonna lend a hand to the party or to the adventure? So those are two things. Who so are the NPCs? And don't add an NPC really unless he plays a purpose, unless he lends a hand or she lends a hand. And finally, the last one is loot because you need to have something to entice the players to go on this little quest. All right? So um, I'll get to the bonuses later. We'll, we'll leave that to the end. That's going to be a little, a little hook. All right? <laughs> a little plot hook for this or the climax of this adventure, the loot, let's say. So let's start with the style. So I chose sword and sorcery. There's a bunch of different styles. I don't know, I'm not just gonna list off the top of my head. I think that goes without saying too much. The hook, making it clear. So I think a lot of times you can draw this from uh, fantasy tropes, you know, like uh, you're, uh, a guide the caravan, you know, th through a place, save the blank, kill the evil blank. So, um, and then just maybe a little, try to throw a little hook in there, I mean a twist in there if you want. So, I had a wizard coup in the desert town of Zebian. So a wizard is uh, take, trying to take over the town from the Sultan and become the new leader, all right? So it's the trope is just, uh, you know, up, like government politics stuff, like some guy's trying to dethrone the king. King wants your help. All right, so then um, what's the climax going to be? They're going to, you're going to, the players are going to kill the wizard, but also alternatively, as I thought it out, thought maybe there could be a twist where if they want to side with the wizard, they could kill the sultan. So there's uh, the climax, either kill the wizard or kill the sultan. Pretty clear. That's when the adventure ends, more or less. All right, we got a bunch of NPCs. So I had Abu Zabi. He's the sultan, the sultan Abu Zabi. And he's secretly greedy and selfish. So I just tried to do like one or two notes um, based on like the most important character traits that are relevant to the to the one shot story. So the reason I said this is this reason I think this is relevant is because uh, I wanted to have the element of the players are helping the Sultan, but they see 
Um, okay, you know what? Actually, I should I should run you through the little five five part thing, and I'll introduce the NPCs in order, and you'll see how each of them plays a part in setting up this, uh, setting the world, and or affecting it in some way, or giving the players a choice. All right. So the first thing they do, they're on their way to meet the Sultan, and there's a, a quick social encounter with a beggar, Balid, and he um, he's basically like, can you spare some coin? And, uh, you know, uh, I used to be, I used to have a job cleaning clothes. And maybe you, uh, before that you say everyone looks dirty and everything's all like unkempt and stuff. The hound looks like it's somewhat in disrepair. But the palace is beautiful. But the palace is also burned down. Okay, so they walk into town, they see smoke coming up. The palace, most of it is burned down. And there's a uh, tower next to it. And both the tower and the palace are much more ornate and clean and well kept than the, um, than the rest of the... Uh, the town. Then they run into the beggar and the beggar confirms that the high taxes are the reason why there's, you know, the town's in shambles or whatever. And that's the Sultan's fault. Then they go to meet the Sultan and he's with Jalil. He's got on his right hand, he's got Jalil, his Grand Vizier. Imagine like a, like a kind of like Jafarish character, maybe bald and creepy and serious looking and stuff like that. And um, then we've got uh, Saif din his like buff bodyguard guy and he's like a nice dude I don't know I for some reason imagine him with a beard and you know one of those like uh, like uh, maybe long hair with a Arabian garb and the, the falchion or scimitar so um, and he's okay so let me tell you the notes I made for each of these so Jalil he's a grand vizier he's mad about the financial setback so the story is that the wizard shot fireball into the palace trying to destroy the palace and kill the king so he can be um uh he can become the king and he's a newly hired wizard he's only been the wizard in this town they built him a tower and hired him from somewhere else paid him a lot of money to come here because um jaleel and abu Z uh, zabi because they're kind of like on the same side uh is eager to bring glory to zebian and uh, uh, in extension himself as the vizier who brought this from a humble little whatever uh, trading post town or just like a whatever town into like a glorious like ooh let's visit Zebian so um, and he wants and he thinks the way to do this is to increase tourism to create marvelous things beautiful things that people will want to come and visit and see and tourists will bring in money so he's his angle is well you know the people have to pay taxes but in the long run it's gonna help them because it's gonna make a thriving city and we'll all uh, prosper all right and uh, Abu Zabi kind of just agrees with this but secretly he's just greedy and selfish and he wants to have a nice palace and spend money lavishly Saif Din, however, needs this job. He's got a big family and he gets paid well to be the, the main bodyguard to Abu Zabi, but he secretly hates the Sultan. All right, so he, but he doesn't want to lose his job, but also he has the trait of he's always honest. Okay, so if they say, like, do you like the Sultan? He'll say, I have a job to do. My personal feelings are no, um, are of no, you know regard in this matter and then if they keep pressing him or if somehow you know they roll a good persuasion check or something like that he might say well the sultan has been cruel and it would be uh, the sultans before had not treated us in this way or whatever something like that um, but but either way I have to just look out for my family first and then maybe at the end if they decide to betray the sultan with a really high persuasion check like a 25 or something he might join their side and he was like pretty strong so that would be a pretty big uh, switch in the occasions okay so they meet these three guys and the Sultan and Jabil say hey there we have this guy Omar locked in locked up he's he's terrified he's freaking out all right and um, he could but he used to be the the wizard's assistant all right and I think he knows a secret way to get into the tower that the wizard built after he came in or something like that so go go talk to him see if you can find that out he won't talk to us so they go they talk to him let's see if they can persuade him basically it says here used to oh no that's uh, here Omar terrified ex assistant of Shalazar Shalazar is the name of the wizard of course and uh, no secret entrance oh and knows um, never to break the hollow glass crystal all right so the two pieces of information that are important is getting the secret entrance and he'll also say as a warning I don't know what's what's up with the crystal but uh, Shalazar the one that's sitting on his desk it's a hollow glass crystal. He told me never to break it, to be very careful around it, never to clean around it even. 
Uh, but yeah, I don't know anything. He doesn't know anything more than that. So that's a little something for the characters and what's in it's a genie or something or air elemental, you know, and depending on what you want, it can act in different ways. And maybe it's against, uh, maybe what's his name, Shalazar imprisoned him. So the genie is going to want to, you know, kick his butt. Or maybe it's an air elemental is just going to freak out and attack whoever's nearest or something like that. So I kind of have, it's an open-ended little, little something. I like to throw little something. Just try to sprinkle a little random bloop, 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 bloop wherever you see fit you know maybe like okay let's sprinkle something else right now um what if there's a rogue who who also just who's who's sneaking into the palace all right so so there's there's some rogues gonna take and take opportunity take this opportunity if you wanted to you could oh no that's gonna change the whole plot i don't know man just sprinkle stuff just sprinkle stuff a little try to think of things that won't change the whole plot but will add an interesting element in in between all right um so then we've got uh okay so then we've they escorted him to omar and you find out the information or not oh and then basically he he it'll be like a he's easily intimidated like 12 or 15 intimidation check but it's hard to persuade him because he's so scared so maybe to persuade is like 20 or 22 to try to persuade him or but if you try if his life is in danger if he feels his life in danger he'll spill the beans because he's just a kind of a cowardly character all right then we've got so they find out the information and then they go to the tower. There's two ways in, either the secret entrance by the forest, if you probably can't see that little pencil drawing, but there's a little secret entrance, goes underground, bloop, you could have some whatever little creature in there, underground creature if you wanted. But otherwise, basically the idea is if they have to break down the door, they can break down the door with a strength check or some kind of fire or lock pick, you know, whatever. It's just a regular door for the most part. If you wanted, that could be another place where you throw a little flare, like a trap. All right, that's a little extra something that's not going to affect the plot. If they get in, there's a stone like golem, stone warrior, and he's just like, ah, ready to attack. So he's going to get the jump on them and get a, like an ambush initiative or whatever if they come in through the front door. But if they go through the back entrance, they're going to sneak up out a little crevice and they're going to see him standing looking at the door. And they can sneak up behind and maybe even just sneak by him. I didn't even think about that, but they could also attack him from behind and get the jump on him instead. How do you like that, Lord Mercer? <laughs> All right. And then that's uh, we're almost at the end. So then on the second level of the tower, we got Shalazar. And the counter with Shalazar, he's going to say, why do you want to attack me? I'll, oh, and by the way, so what was the loot? Why did the Sultan even tell you guys to go on this journey, right? He's going to say, well, once you kill the wizard, you can have whatever's in the tower of his stuff, okay? That's not a very generous request, because remember, the, the wizard's greedy. Maybe with some persuasion or intimidation or whatever, he can be convinced to throw in something else, all right? Um, but, um, but yeah, so I wanted that, that kind of maybe him to come off as sleazy and a little bit like, even when he's saving his own town, he's still trying to save a buck. You know, so, but then when you meet the wizard, he's going to point this kind of stuff out and see, say he's greedy, look at the state of the town, I would do a much better job as a town leader, and blah, 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 join me, and I'll tell you, I'll teleport you down there, and you can get the jump on the sultan, and take him out, alright, or, or I'll pretend to be going back with you peacefully and then that's good he'll because then the, the the what's it called maybe the PCs will get there and be like actually we are turning you over we just wanted to get you here peacefully so that's an interesting little way it could go um, and don't worry if it goes another way don't worry we'll get into that finally so the fight with Shalazar there's that the that, that elemental thing could be a part of it and I don't know just in, design a little encounter give him some minion or two if you think that he needs it to stand up to the party or make him powerful Whatever, maybe he conjures the creature. That'd be pretty cool. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it. And then they're like, boom. I know that kind of leaves it open-ended for them. Like if they join Salzar, now they got a, now they're like officials in this city, I guess. Or the very, anyways, I like to leave one shots where you could make it into something more, but it was satisfying within the thing as a little side story or whatever. It's hard to, to really have like a full emotionally um like a resolute res resolved story in in like four hour session or three hour session anyways so what about these bonus do you don't think i think it's like a strange danger bat plans all right so these are also based on uh the dark lord mercer's uh, 11 tips so one of them is have plans and areas for if the characters go off in some other direction that you didn't expect 
and it can be like open-ended like if they go into the forest there's one place where they're gonna go uh, even if they go into the forest over here or over there or left or right it doesn't matter because you can't plan the whole thing out unless you do but not for a one shot <laughs> so the two things I thought that would mess up the, the story like I was like okay what characters could they kill if they kill Jaleel if they kill the beggar if they kill any other character but the Sultan the Sultan could just be like, oh man, uh, I don't know, just whatever, you know, just don't kill me and I'll give you more money and go do what I asked, okay? Something like that. But what if they kill the Sultan? All right, what was the contingency plan for that? I think that it was that, uh, oh man, did I forget? I think it was something that like the wizard would then have control of the city and attack them instead or something like that. Um, because he thinks that they're trying to take control of the city, maybe, okay? So then you would just have a battle with the wizard. And if they already fought the Sultan and all this stuff, then they're probably already two hours into the campaign anyways. So after resolving that, if you just want to resolve the whole little story, you could say the wizard shows up and he said, hey, well, I was going to kill the Sultan. Um, and it looks like you guys are trying to do what I'm doing, so you're dead meat, and that's it. And then they fight, all right? The other thing is if they just leave the area, they go somewhere else. Um, oh man, did I forget what I had going for that too? But basically, they just if they go out into the desert, you have some desert bandits assault them or something, I guess. And if, yeah, you could just have bandits in the city or in the thing. I thought I, I thought probably had something better. See, that's why they're called bat plans. I should have written them down like Batman would in some s cyber computer because Batman always has a contingency plan for every outcome, he's ready with a plan typed up in Google Docs. All right, and then the last one is Stranger Danger, and I guess that's actually weird that it's last because it's probably maybe the first thing, but I didn't want to include it here because it's kind of more of a side note, I felt, than like a core thing, is uh, uh, the Dark Lord Mercer was saying that um, you got to have, like, you don't want to have your the, the whole tavern start where they don't know each other and have to get to know each other. He's saying it's rarely fun. I mean, I think it's kind of fun sometimes, but it is a big time waster, and it's not progressing the plot or it's not as fun as the rest of the game I think I can definitely agree on that so said so don't start them off that way just have a reason why they know each other already or have them meet for a specific purpose and they're already just gonna go and do that so um, that's a thing don't have them be strangers at the beginning that's the stranger danger and the way I had this resolved is that they just are chosen by the uh, by the Emperor they all were told to, to come quickly to gather together or something and they're being led by maybe they're being led by Jaleel in the beginning so they can talk to Jaleel a little then the beggar oh that'll be cool because then they can talk to the beggar and Jaleel be like shut up you don't know anything about politics and the beggar would say you don't know anything about living in the streets and then he would say ah, the scavenger scavenger scum scavenger is scum ah all right, and that's it pretty much. I think now that you know the style hook climax hands loot method, you're uh, all the better for it. So until next time, peace, God bless, and stay fantastic, everyone.